Hello everyone and welcome to another Hero Arts video. This is Yana Smakula. Today I'm going to be making fun colorful backgrounds using a retro phone image to create simple hello cards. Here's a look at the stamp set that I'll be using today. It's Friends by Leah, designed by the incredibly talented Leah Griffith for Hero Arts. I really love the little retro phone image in this set and I'm going to use it to create simple backgrounds for my projects in this video. I also want to use the little owl and make it look like it's the owl calling and saying hello friend. There are also some other great images in this set, a few little flowers, a beautiful floral wreath and some fun sentiments too. As for the inks, I'll be using Hero Arts Shadow Inks and I've picked a few colors for these projects. I have Tide Pool, Green Hills, Soft Cantaloupe and Butter Bar. I also grabbed a soft vanilla ink but ended up not using it, however I think it would work nicely for this project. I've already created a few practice backgrounds and I wanted to show you these before we got to the actual stamping part to give you some more ideas. So here I have phones stamped in soft cantaloupe. I only stamped uh, those partially and you can add a sentiment on top of that panel or trim it down and use it on a smaller card like I did on, on, this, on this card here. Next I have an identical panel with the retro phones stamped in mint ink. You can also use tide pool for this one. It looks very, very pretty, especially when combined with gold. And finally, two more panels stamped using multiple colors of ink. The one is rather simple, the one on the left. The phones were simply stamped one on top of the other by using the colors that I mentioned before. And the one on the right is a little bit more fun and playful as it's stamped at an angle and the images are offset a little bit. I'm going to show the easiest way to create a background pattern like this one in today's video. So here I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inches panel cut out of Hero Arts Snow White paper and I'm going to draw a diagonal line using a pencil. I'm not measuring anything at this point, I'm simply drawing a line where I like. Next I'm going to tilt my paper and align the line with the grid lines on my cutting mat. Now I need to measure the phone image and figure out how tall it is. This will tell me how much space I need to have in between my horizontal lines. So the phone is about an inch wide and I'm going to draw a few more horizontal lines on my panel. I'm basically creating a grid that will help me to evenly space and position my phones. This grid will also help me to stamp all images in one color and then move on to the next color and so on, instead of switching the colors of ink after every impression. It's by all means possible to create a background like this without doing the grid, but in my opinion it just takes a little longer and it really isn't as perfect. So now that I have my horizontal lines, I'm going to add a first vertical line. It doesn't matter where I add it at this point. Now please know that it's not going to be a solid line. It's going to skip every other horizontal block or every other row. Just like so, I'm adding a vertical line connecting the first and the second horizontal lines, then skipping the second and the third, connecting third and fourth, skipping fourth and fifth, connecting fifth and sixth, and skipping sixth and seventh. I'll explain why in the moment. Now I need to figure out how wide my phone image is. And it's actually about an inch and a quarter. So I'm measuring an inch and a quarter to the right and once again adding the same vertical lines and skipping the same horizontal blocks. I know this probably sounds very confusing at the moment, but trust me, it's pure simplicity. So keep measuring and keep adding lines to your panel until you have your pencil line grid ready. Here's a closer look at my piece and hopefully you can see all of the pieces, all of the lines here a little better. Now let me explain why we didn't just go ahead and do vertical and horizontal lines. When I layer ink, any kind of ink, on top of pencil lines, it's very hard to get those pencil lines out. I've tried this many times and every time I have a hard time erasing everything from my base panel. So this time I decided I will only add pencil lines where I won't have any ink on top. My horizontal lines separate the horizontal blocks or rows of phones and my vertical lines indicate how to position those phones and how to offset them. Now you can totally skip this grid part if you don't mind cleaning your stamp after every impression. To create a background like this and to know where to stamp a next image you either need to have a grid like I do here or stamp images one by one, one next to each other and if you want to have a multicolored background you will need to clean your stamp if you do not have a grid. So that will take longer in my opinion. I'm going to work a little differently on my background because I now have a grid I can stamp several phones in one color. Basically I'm stamping one phone in one color in one line or in one row. I have four colors and about four images will fit in one row so I need one color for each row. Pretty simple. If there is a vertical line in the row that I'm stamping in 
I will stamp right next to it. If there isn't a vertical line in the row that I'm stamping in, but there are vertical lines in the row above and below, I will use the grid lines of my clear block and will stamp my phone so that the pencil lines would have passed through the center of my phone. The pencil line would have passed through the center of my phone. You can also have solid pencil lines on your grid and simply erase uh, parts of them as you are stamping to have the same result. But then again, I think that would just take a little longer. I've zoomed in a little and hopefully you are now able to see my grid and my stamping a little better and understand what I'm doing here. Because I have this grid, I'm stamping all of the images in one color at once and I'm able to work a little faster. After my first color, tight pool, has been stamped, I cleaned my image and moved on to the second color, the green hills. Just like I did the first time, I'm going to stamp one green phone in each row following my grid. Then again, clean my stamp and move on to the next color and keep stamping one phone in each row. And finally, I'm filling in the gaps using the last color, the soft count lobe for this background. I personally love to create backgrounds like this. I do love large background stamps and I use them often, but there's just something about being able to make a custom background yourself, especially when I can use multiple colors of ink for my stamping. So here's a look at the background that I just finished and the one that I showed you before. I can now go ahead and erase the pencil lines and finish making my card. Here I have a panel that measures four by six and a half inches that is cut out of vellum. I'm going to use my anti-static powder pouch to prep the surface for heat embossing. I will be stamping Hello Friend and embossing this sentiment using gold embossing powder from Hero Arts. I want to do double-sided embossing on this piece. I love doing this on vellum. I have a sentiment heat emboss on one side and will heat emboss a floral wreath on the other side of vellum. This looks especially fun when done in two different colors, colors of embossing powder. For example, sentiment is embossed in gold and wreath is embossed in white. Is embossed in white. By heat embossing two different images on two sides of vellum, I'm able to keep edges of both images sharp and defined and embossing powder from one image doesn't melt into the other one. I'm not going to use any adhesive to attach my vellum to my card. I'm going to score it, score my vellum, and that's why my panel was actually six and a half inches long. So I'm going to score a half of an inch on both sides and will fold my vellum panel over the stamped background and we'll have it attached that way. I've also heat embossed a little owl on top of my sentiment and now I'm going to secure my vellum in place by adding a little bit of tape to the back to the back of my stamped, uh, stamped background. I can now go ahead and adhere this onto an A2 top folding card base and embellish with some gems. You can by all means adhere the vellum to your stamped panel. There are special kinds of adhesive that will allow you to do this, but I didn't want to use any adhesive, so I folded my vellum instead. So here's a look at all three cards that I created using my stamped backgrounds. The first one with a large vellum panel. Love the look of the muted stamped background here and the heat embossed wreath on the back of my vellum. The next one is a smaller landscape card with a heat embossed hello. There's a lot of dimension here. And finally, the last one with the mint phones and some more heat embossing. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section on YouTube or Hero Arts blog. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.